experiment and as you can see there is a slight experimental issue with my camera uh, at least the main camera which is it doesn't work right now <laughs> okay uh, this means my camera uh, will deal we may be in the dark but um, yeah well if we're in the dark then we're in the dark and we'll just deal with it I don't know why um, oh, maybe it's okay. There it is. It came back. Uh, so I think we're okay. Huh. Yeah. Well, here we are. <laughs> Camera's pointing slightly in the wrong place, but we can fix that. Bit of brute force. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, Settling in for, I think we'll we'll go for at least an hour here, and I have a job to do, and we're gonna see what happens with it. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're tuning in for the first time, um, this is really just an exploration of what it takes to get old computing machinery to talk to the modern world, and the particular piece of old computing machinery that we have running here is a teletype model 33 and it dates to the late 60s or maybe 1970 and it's in full working order um, these are not completely rare but they're rare enough that you don't see them very much and um, this is the ancestral computer terminal so if you're used to a computer that looks uh, like a mac or a windows machine and you open a command window or a terminal um, this is called a terminal because um, this is the physical thing that that replaced <laughs> so in the way that everything is turned into an app on your computer the, the original interface has two um, this is old enough to be completely mechanical there are little gears spinning it's motorized that's why it makes a bit of noise it's connected to uh, a Linux machine I think this runs Unix I'm just, um, I'm just logged in. Um. It's uh, a version of Debian Linux distro um, on the Google Coral T HTPU device. And I'm not really using any machine learning here at all, but there you are. We'll, we'll do that at some point, because <laughs> why not? Um. But let me take a slight change of direction for the day because the goal today is not to really work with the teletype at all instead I have acquired another project and zoom out all the way out the other project looks a little like That's a strange name, and if you Google it, there's not many of those um, But if you are familiar with this kind of thing, it is essentially a well-known device in the world of Android. It's kind of a uh, digital copy of a very famous HP Android. And my task today is to get it working 
Um, so I'm going to leave the teletype humming away in the background a little um, and give you an overview of what the task that we're trying to head towards here today so that I get my head straight. Um, I've put all this up on GitHub um, and I've done a little bit of hacking on this so far and um, I uh, just plugged in the Raspberry Pi that is going to run this. So the goal here is basically to say um, it's a pen plotter. Let's make it appear like a network printer so that anybody who's on the Wi-Fi at the Brickyard where I am here in this makerspace will be able to see a pen plotter. And that's okay. So we'll uh, use actually the Python IPP print server that I was using before. And um, I'll show you how I did that. Um, then this Raspberry Pi will receive from the whatever prints to it, it'll receive PDF files or HPGL. And um, so let me see. Let's go dig into that. Um, actually, I, I'll, I'll open a terminal because hopefully this machine is actually on the network already. I plugged it in and I can ping it and the ping says penplot1.local is up and running. Um, uh, should I do from, from this from the teletype? I mean, I could actually do this from the teletype. But, um, uh, okay. I am connected to pi at penplot1.local. Let me do that from the teletype just because it gets me a chance to do hands-on keyboard. <laughs> and let's see. It's a Raspberry Pi, so the username is pi at uh, penplot1. Uh, Pemplot1 being the uh, the host name that I set in the Raspberry Pi config. Um, and Pemplot1.local using the magic of um, multicast DNS or ZeroConf or Bonjour or MDNS or Avahi or whatever that thing is called. Um, And the authenticity of this can't be established because I've never connected to it before. But I have a DSA key, and that looks totally reasonable. Are you sure you want to connect? I do. Oh, and that's weird. There is some weirdness with the teletype terminal settings. It keeps repeating what you tell it, and that happened before. And it happens with all sorts of apps on the teletype. And it's it's not my imagination because it just did it again. Oh well. Anyway, that's on my to-do list to fix. I'm completely mystified by it. Still. Um, And I'm logged in. And it's a Raspberry Pi. Okay. And so, um, yeah, let's show you around on this. Yeah, the, the camera page setup stuff around here is woeful, but we may do. <laughs> Join in on the chat. Uh, I'm running the, the Twitch bot on the teletype as well, so if you want to uh, say anything, it'll probably print it. Even though I'm SSH'd into something else, um, I'm not running. Oh, uh, anyway, try it. 
Maybe it'll work. Um, pling, bell. Yes, the bell works. If I write just test, it's not printing it because the, uh, the terminal's not ready for it. Anyway, um, you can run pling bell, it'll ring the bell and get my attention. Um, so, um, on the pen plotter, we have a home directory with a bit of stuff in it. And uh, a directory HPGL, which is this um, this GitHub repo that I showed you here. And so that is this directory. It's checked out into here. And there's a few things of interest. Um, let me take you through what's in here. Avahi, in there, there is a service to run. Uh, so Avahi is this thing that does um, zero conf networking. Um, and I don't know exactly how that works. I think it's multicast because that's MDNS is called multicast. Um, anyway, it does seem to do the right thing. Um, there is a service definition. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the service definition file is XML. And it basically defines a service that Avahi is going to advertise um, on the network. And um, that should present a network printer to anybody who's listening. So um, let's go try it. So this is, um, I, pre I prepared this at home and I'm, I'm glad so far that it seems to be working right. <laughs> More or less. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's go down here and change this thing to be my uh, system preferences window. And in system preferences, if I go to printers and scanners, then I've got my printer at home that's um, not doing anything. And then if I hit plus, oh, uh, it's just wicked slow because um, because OBS takes up all the CPU in the world. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> I got to switch my window capture device again because. Uh, where's my thing? It's called add. Yeah. This is the window that I'm seeing. And there is a, um, a couple of other printers. Um, and penplot1.local, which is the thing running the Raspberry Pi. So, so this appears here because of this Avahi service definition thing. And the service definition thing says it is uh, it's a printer. Oh no, it's uh, that's the IPP path. So slash printer. It is a digital LVP16. That, that's that's the name of the device. And its uh, name. Where's the name? Uh, name over here at the top is penplot1.local. So Avahi service is running and it's advertising this thing as a device on the network. And if you look down at the bottom area of this, it says penpot one lo local is the name and the location, it's a digital LVP16 pen plotter over AirPrint. So there we go. That's step zero, that's the Avahi stuff. Now, Avahi just advertises the service, it doesn't do anything else, um, as far as I know. <laughs> Again, correct me where I'm wrong, because I'm making like wild, sweeping generalizations as though I know what I'm talking about, and I only just like Googled it yesterday. Um, so, <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, 
the printer types in the Avahi spec um, seem to be really badly documented. But I tried to I tried to add up like the bits that say this does color and it does letter size print, letter size paper. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's Avahi. It advertises the printer. It seems to be that, uh, that it's actually online. Certainly, my Mac thinks it's online. Um, so what's next? The next thing is the actual um, is the actual print server, and and the thing that I have here is um, a little uh, a little batch file that is run from a Chrome tab and. Because it's run from Cron, I've got to source the, the profile. Um, it sets up a few environment variables to point to um, run, which is the thing that's actually going to do the printing, and then the PPD, which is a printer definition file, and then data directory for the ITP server and some names and info and stuff. And then, this magical incantation that goes away off the end of the line. And you can't really see the whole line anyway because it scrolls off the bottom of the screen. So, um, that, that long line there says authbind dash dash deep. And that allows Python to talk to a low numbered port, which is like. Oh no! I'm jittering and losing connection and all over. Wow. Well, I'm sorry, my Wi Fi is all messed up, it seems. That's really sad. Sorry, people. I know the stream is getting super flaky. Um, yeah. I think it might be just like local network something. Nobody else is in the space here, but who knows. Anyway, um, it could be that my little underpowered Mac is, is feeling the strain too. Anyway, authbind is, a, is like a, a way of having unprivileged apps run on low numbered ports. Um, and uh, the printer port is using the printing protocol IPP, which defaults to port 631, and so I want to use it authbind. And then I'm running this IPP server, which is a Python module that I forked from some guy on Python that we talked about before. So I've put it onto this new Raspberry Pi to run the plotter. So that means, in theory, if I go back to my uh, browser, uh, then some other magical things are going to happen. Actually, let's um, yeah, let's continue and add this because when I say add, then what should happen is it connects to the pen plotter, and it is you can't see the the uh, the window. There's a little window that says setting up pen plot one local, and can I find it? Uh, nope. And it's trying to, and it hasn't really succeeded yet. It says creating the device, and it's kind of waiting. So there may be something actually broken in this. Oh no, I think it did. Yes, it did. All right, we have a window. And it says it's idle. It doesn't really have a print queue, there's nothing in there. Uh, there should be no options. Uh, there's no supply levels. I mean, this is not a very smart printer. It doesn't know how much ink is in the pens. And so on. It's, it doesn't even know which pens are in the carousel. Because the carousel looks like this. Then we're going to stick some pens in it. Um, but there it is. It's running. It's a printer. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Now let's switch this back to my browser. And um, uh, here we are. Within the browser, then we've got this uh, bin directory that we just looked at that has the IPP stuff. And it also has a file called printhpgl. And this is a bit longer, so let's show it on here because otherwise it will take forever to print. Um, so this is basically a shell script that says, now I don't know if this is actually going to work. I've never tried it, but we're going to try it now. Um, the device that the pen plotter is going to connect to is a Teamz. It's going to uh, make a spool directory. It's going to take whatever came on input and save it into that directory and then look at that file and say, is it a PDF, is it PostScript, or is it HPGL? So there we are. Okay, now, HTTP pen plot one dot local slash, no, port 631, that's the, the port the printer is listen, listening on. There is actually an HTTP server here. Uh, it doesn't do anything. I've also run Apache on port 80 and it didn't work. Is it working? Yay, it is. It's running Apache. And there's a little web page and you can see this on the on the web as well. So that's what I did just did is click that link effectively. Uh, and then in theory anything that you can print that is like graphic like it's going to print so so far so good um, oh i can't do i can't do pipes on this one um i want to look at um is ipp running I don't know if this is going to work. This may be a terrible mistake. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I'm trying to find, like, is the IPP server running? And I'm pretty sure it is. And I think that's it. There it is. Python dash IPP server. Slightly off the page for people watching on the screen here. All right. <clears throat> okay, we've got it running. I plugged it in, it found the Wi-Fi. All my stuff is up there. Uh, now, now the fun begins. All right. <sighs> okay. Just the scenery. I've got to move some things around. <laughs> Chat amongst yourselves. Ring the bell if anybody's there. Please ring the bell. And, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, can I give you a nice view? Uh, 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 Project number seven. Can you bring the point? All right. Uh, okay. Uh, the panel is running the workshop where everything is on top of everything else. One of the problems with that is my lighting is terrible. Another problem is I just feel like I have to talk and just do it. I feel like uh, I also can't pain you. <laughs> now, having moved the crowbar, the hands, we can get a great shot of the boat in the chair. Yes. Okay, the hands, we can get a decent shot of. Um, 
the plotter with its with its lid off. And of course, it looks nicer with the lid on, but uh, we've got the lid off right now. So, um, let's describe the problems that we face here. First of all, uh, I'm going to move the microphone over as well so you can hear me a little. And is that going to cause issues? Yes. All right. It was enormous issues. Because the microphone's not really attached in a secure way. So bear with me again while I pick it up. Well, I'm just going to put it down. Now, yes, slightly better. Okay, <laughs> the plotter thickens, thank you, very good. Um, you can get my attention also by going, playing bell on the, on the chat and it'll ring the telephone for you. Because <laughs> so, I'm, I'm kind of facing the other direction now and not looking at the screen. Um, yeah, thanks for joining, this is really cool. All right. Um, yeah, so first of all, I, I had to, I 3D printed this piece, and um, it doesn't fit, which is super annoying, um, but I think fixable. So somewhere I got myself a tiny little baby-sized file, and I promptly lost it. <sighs> all right, there's the tiny-sized file. I've got to file this thing down. Anyway. Um, somebody ring the bell or something. This is going to be just like play amongst yourselves while I get a little file to, <laughs> to make this thing fit into the print. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> the power of technology. <laughs> okay. Yes! I tell you what, I'm going to log out from this thing. And it's lost the connection to the same color. And then I'm going to do... Um, message Y. It'll turn on messages, so now I can see that the, uh, the chat actually turned down. 
So now you can actually type stuff, like real things, and they'll print. That's much more fun. <laughs> Yeah, so the printout on this thing um, took a while. It, it's the first like practical thing I've 3D printed for ages. And um, it's not my printer, it's the, the Ted who, who set up this space. It's his, that belongs to the makerspace. And it, it was pretty slow, but it came out really nice. And I have to like, climb it down really carefully, fit it over this this notchy thing and I don't want it to fit too snugly I think it's at the point it seems to be at the point where it fits a little too snugly that if I forced it, it would go in so I think a little bit more filing is in order um, and the Geneva drive thing that it actually drives is beautiful like the most wonderful mechanism of turning rotation into click one, click two, click three. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, what else is wrong with this plotter? Well, I think nothing really is wrong with this plotter, but it's too soon to tell. Um, it was practically uh, new in box. I mean, it, it really literally seems to never have been used. Um, and so I think maybe there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I haven't swapped out capacitors or anything like sensible like that. Hey, my piece fits. That is a work of genius and art. Okay, now, uh, yeah, so I think it fits, and it seems to be like super stiff, oh it does fit, it's just, it's uh, clipping against the top of the, There's a, little, there's a little piece of plastic it's catching on, so I think I need to lift it off again. Oh, one more time. And I think to ease its way, I'm going to put some... Uh, put some grease on it. It's plastic, it doesn't really need grease. But, um, Sorry, I missed the beginning. What does the part do? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me actually zoom you in, um, if I can hold this correctly. This is the pen carousel from the plotter, and uh, it sits on top of a Geneva drive, and the the uh, the part is the is the cam that turns the Geneva drive, and so basically it. Uh, clicks around to select the pen and the carousel holds six pens yes and uh, yeah so um, so we have a little six pen plotter and this thing dates I think to 1984 um, that's just a guess, it could be 85 or something, but these things were hugely popular around that time. Um, or at least the HP, G, the HP 7475A, that this is a, a badged version of, was massively popular in 83, 84, 85. Um, so, uh, yeah, never used the sort of Intel, and it came with some pens because, you know, everybody needs to All right.
was from that era. I heard, yeah, absolutely. We could maybe try plot it. If you can um, drop a link. 13 by 17. Yeah, interesting. Um, I think 13 by 17. So it's a letter sized uh, bed, but it doesn't use the bed, right? The bed is really just to keep the paper flat. Um, the pen just moves up and down the axis, like this. And then the paper is moved by these uh, these rotors here. You can't very see very well beneath the rotor. Actually, I'll get the I'll get the camera over and show you the, the rolling mechanism. It moves the paper. It doesn't move the it doesn't move the pen. And um, yeah. So I think 13 by 17 should maybe print. Or even we can, I mean, it's PDF, so we can size it. Um, but of course, I haven't tried printing anything PDF, because who knows if that is even going to work. But what better, what better thing to try? <laughs> so, I mean, the, when I was setting up the print server on the teletype, I was like really pissed, because it's <laughs> like, PDF, this is horrible. <laughs> but PDF is just vector graphic notation and it's exactly the same kind of style of vector graphics as the uh, as HPGL and so according to my little piece of reading um, it, it should come out as a fairly good fidelity right here's my um, universal grease uh, let's put a tiny bit on the end of this on the business end and um, hope that keeps us out of trouble. So, uh, <laughs> I have a lifetime supply of like aerosol grease. Because <laughs> of course having a teletype, <laughs> I thought, yeah, yeah, I better get some grease for this thing. And I used a little tiny bit and, um, and it's wonderful. <laughs> but I've got too much of it. Anyway, that cam fits perfectly. Let's spin it around and see is it gonna is it gonna break? I think it's gonna break. Still. I think it's gonna break still because it is ever so slightly thicker than it really needs to be. And uh, so it's sitting in a way that is catching, catching the edge of this thing. All right, I need a slightly heavier weight file to deal with that. Back in a couple when I get a file. Do this um, somewhere out of range. Let's see. Yeah, so what else? Well, having a pen plotter is wicked exciting. And this approach of making it appear on a print server, I think, is sensible up to a point because it means that anybody in the location can print PDF and have a good chance that it's going to come out with a plotter. So that's great. But it doesn't deal with... Um, oh, I know what it is. It's too thick because of the support. It has like a tiny piece of support layer that would just not need it for the thickness of it. So yeah, the... Uh, it's going to print great. 
anybody can come on like Inkscape is my goal here and like we've, we've got classes for kids they can um, fire up Inkscape on, on the machines here and there's a whole like print facility with a nice uh, a, a really nice inkjet and so on so you can fire up Inkscape and then choose the pen plotter and say print, and there's a good chance that it'll actually print really well from a vector graphic app like Inkscape. But then also you can just send raw HPGL text to it, and that's going to be my first test when we actually got this one up and running. After messing with the hardware a little, is uh, can we send an HPGL file to the printer? and have it come out in HPGL lettering. Okay, that's looking better. Slightly dirty work environment, but uh, I think it's in the right zone, and sure enough, it clears the spot now. And the Geneva mechanism is Seems to be okay. Oh, that's interesting. I think the printer, the 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 3D print is a little bit too heavy, even on the inside. And uh, so I want to take the edge off the inside of this curve. It's ever so slightly catching as the drive comes around. So, close enough, I'd rather it was too big than too small, because at least I can adjust it and deal with it. Yeah, that should help. Oh, oh, is that you doing that? <laughs> I saw the mails on the list, and I thought, oh yeah. Um, and I saw the 1620 project, which looks fantastic. Um, and a similar kind of approach that I've taken here with like a Teensy as the, as the USB driver. Because I like the Teensy devices, they're really a pretty appropriate technology. Um, so, where did you get your wheel right there? Oh, not sure that was you. Oh, okay. No, no. no. Uh, that was the 1620 people um, on the classic computer mailing list, I think, the CC talk. Anyway, so tell us about your real writer. Do you have it? Do you have the device? And if so, what is that? got one at the Tektronix Surplus Store. Wow! Is there a Tektronix Surplus Store? Send me the address, I want to be there. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and so the wheel writer is a daisy wheel. So it's got to be letter quality, right? Letter quality. Wow. Yes, bargain. That's really awesome. 25 bucks for a Daisy Wheel printer. I guess not many people want Daisy Wheel printers these days. Wow. All right, the cam I think is fixed. Let's uh, take this to the next little piece. Um, this can go finally in the trash. I've also got some of these uh, that I got from somebody on eBay. Um, these are 3D printed Sharpie holders um, because the uh, actual HP pens. I got some new old stock HP pens and they're a bit bad. Some of them are, are working fine. Some of them I think are a little bit clunky. Um, certainly the black ones that I've tried so far are really not very really good. Um, so the, the idea here is you can just like drop these things in. And there is a specific way that the colors are supposed to be oriented and so on. But for now, let's just try it the way we can. Uh, 
Um, light number one is supposed to be black, I think. Um, but who knows, they're just color pen. Uh, they're all sitting beautifully. That looks nice. <laughs> Randomly. And there's a little cap that goes in there. There it is. <coughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, so these let you put Sharpies in there. And I'm going to experiment with whatever kind of Sharpies and etc. that I can get a hold of once it's up and around. But that's for a future day. So pens across there. The final and most important piece is to connect the plotter to the Raspberry Pi. And I have two alternate methods, and I hope that one of them is going to succeed. And um, I don't really know which one. <coughs> so, let's talk about those. Um, this here is a uh, off-the-shelf uh, StarTech um, USB to RS-232, and this has RS-232, so I can just plug it in the back. Um, and it, it's um, I don't know. I I don't want to use this on the pen plotter <coughs> because I want to save this for the. Um, digital console terminal that I have, the, the deck writer. Um, so then the other thing is a regular uh, DB25 to DB9 cable and then a SparkFun um, RS-232 to TTL adapter. And then on the other side of that, a Teensy 2.0 uh, USB uh, thing, microprocessor. And that's basically the same thing I have here that I've been practicing with. But I haven't programmed this one. So I think that's my next task. Um, let's unplug that off of the... Uh, Raspberry Pi. Take this thing here. <coughs> plug it in. To, oh shoot! I run out of USB. This is going to be interesting. Then um, I'm going to plug it into, at the risk of breaking everything inside. I'm going to plug it into my. Um, And it didn't seem to break everything inside, but of course you can't see it. But um, then I'm going to go Arduino, <coughs> and um, wait until Arduino fires up. So the final piece of this that is, who knows if this is going to work, is to actually build a uh, little serial to USB driver, which I did with Arduino. Um, give that a second, it's going to take a little while because my CPU is chewing uh, on OBS. And then if I go here and switch this thing to uh, Arduino. This is the serial interface to the plotter. <coughs> it basically says uh, it's going to handle X on and X off. And it's going to set 9600 board on the serial and the USB. There is no self-test pin. Um, it's going to say uh, read it from the data from the plotter. If the plotter sends us X on or X off, then turn on and off this kind of thing. And then turn the, uh, the LED on if we're active and turn it off if we're not. Which I think is okay. 
Maybe it ought to be the other way around. But let's run it like that. Okay, so then, two balls. Board is USB to the Port is, I don't know what port. Is it gonna, is it gonna allow me to program the TZ? This is the, the $65,000 question. There's a few warnings, I can hopefully ignore them. It did not detect the TMZ. Let's put the loader button. It did not detect the TMZ through the load. Oh, it did! Yes! And... I believe it programmed the TMZ correctly. It did. The little Teensy Duino window, I don't think you can see, says reboot OK. So, now we have a Teensy programmed with the right sketch. And uh, I'm going to plug the Teensy into the Raspberry Pi. Plug the USB thing into the plotter. Then plug the plotter into the power. This is where the fun starts, right? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, Paul is a uh, force of nature. He's a real star. That Dorkbot PDX, that sounds cool. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, well, uh, say hi from me. He doesn't know who I am, but I, 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 I love his stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Should we turn it on? The Raspberry Pi is on, I hope. Although there's no lights. I should probably check that the Raspberry Pi is still, uh, still active before going anywhere on this. Yep. Uh, and dev TTYACM0 is the Teensy. And so let's put it up. We're on. It says uh, it, it says it's got B-sized paper, um, which I guess is is twice letter, like twice as twice as big. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Um, at this pop file to did that work? Well no <laughs> it didn't. The little arrow light is blinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I get that the error light is blinking. Now what? <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> okay, I need to reset the error light. Let's uh, turn it off. Turn it back on again. It's in the neutral position. The error light is not blinking. Uh, I'm going to uh, echo initialize sp1 to device ttyacm0. And the error light is blinking. All right. How do I tell what the error is? 
I don't know if there's a good way to tell what the error is. Okay. Because so, if I do um, this 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 plot file that I tried to print here, it's fairly wrong. Yeah, please print. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's the best thing to do. Um, screen. Uh, what's the thing that says speed? Um, oh no. Do you remember the screen command that, that um, controls the board rate? Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. I, I do want to set it to 9600 um, because that's the way it should be expected. Although it's USB, so it shouldn't really be possible to get it wrong because it's USB. Um, so let's see, screen, dev, gty, acm0, 9600. There it is. Okay, the error light is still on. I think I'm going to <laughs> I think it's possible. It may not be possible to get it wrong. We'll try. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? It could crash the print head. <laughs> okay, so here I am. And the error light is flashing now. Okay, I'm going to turn this Turn it on again. Oh, I didn't even check the, the... Yeah. Well, that would help, wouldn't it? I got the board rate wrong. But I got the board rate wrong on the device itself. And on the device here, there is a helpful... Um, if I can find this. There is a helpful... Um, little printout at the bottom of the de desired board rate, and these bits, these uh, bit switches on the back of the thing, should be set to B4 is a, is a 1, 1010, zero, one, zero, and B4 is a 1. And I had not got that set up right. So uh, let's make sure that the power is off. And it's sure enough, it's B4 is 1. It was 1001 zero, zero, one in the current settings. Okay. All right. And then there's parity settings. Um, who knows if they're important? Let's try this with the right board rate. Because 1001 zero, zero, one is not even, oh no, it's 4800. 1001 that it was set to is a 4800 board, and that's uh, probably enough to make it fail. Okay. So, I'm still in screen. Let's turn the machine on. And uh, something happened in screen. Okay. I am semicolor on. S one semicolon. Oh yes. There is pen one. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's not echoing, but I think it actually worked. So um, so yeah. Okay. So it picked up the pen, and I think that's enough to say it succeeded. Um, now, the, 
the drop the pen again when I need the paper. I haven't figured out the rough protocol for like picking up the paper and stuff. But. Okay, what I was going to do now is go in here and actually catch this plot file. There, TPY ACM0. I'm going to catch this plot file to the terminal again and see what happens. And it says device or resource busy. Okay. Turn it off. Turn it on again. Put some paper down. Device or resource busy. Okay. Let's try again. Oh. Actually the, the Teensy is busy. Huh. Well, let's do a hard reset on the TV. The screen still have a hold of it. Um, well, I closed the terminal window, but maybe screen does, yeah. No, the screen is dead. Um, now that works. Oh, oh, it's doing something. Oh my, oh my, oh my. It works. <laughs> it works. Now, it failed because it went off the side of the screen, or side of the paper. But this is what it printed. Uh, you can't really see that. Uh, let's see. There it is. It is. It is the hotter plotter action. <laughs> It works. So my, my thing, it looks like it's back to front, which is amazing. But the quality of this print is fantastic. It's, it's extraordinary. Okay, so, uh, let's put this back in here. Uh, I have to reset the error button. So. How do I reset the error button just by turning it off and on again? Alright. Well. That worked almost. My test file was wrong, but I can live with that. <laughs> How specific do you want to be here? <laughs> it is. Exactly. It is exactly vector graphic. It's like absolutely perfect. Um, that, that to me is the whole thing. Um, yeah. And... Um, Vector graphic is, it's like, vector graphics are everywhere. They are, um, SVG files are everywhere. Um, and actually, I guess I should find, oh, I know what I should find. I should find, like, an emoji. Because I have emojis. a little command on here that says give me the URL of an emoji. So emoji URL uh, yay. And then yay is an emoji. You can try new name. No. Oh, I'm just going to... I can't copy 
see the face drop from one window to the other. It looks, it looks a little boring way on a, on a channel that has copy and paste. Um, there's a three, three and four. I say file print. I mean, you're not going to see the dialogue probably, it'll just pop up. It's doing the beat ball right now. But if I say file print and then choose that network printer, then uh, it should. Okay, printer, template one local. Um, it, had, it gives me some layout choices. It says scale. Uh, I don't know which way. Uh, let's just try it. <laughs> okay, that printed. Nothing is happening on the plotter. Plotter's showing an error condition. Oh no. Turn it off and on again. Plotter is no longer showing an error condition. Uh, let's look at what happened. There is a log. And it has this IPP request. That's okay. And there's a print log. <coughs> okay. Oh, that's interesting. It received a postscript file, and then the postscript thing worked. Huh. Let's keep tailing that thing and see what happens. Um, so let's try this a different way. On Inkscape, I'm going to open that same emoji and then I'm going to save it as HPGL into my home directory and then In my in my home directory, I have HPGL, and that looks totally reasonable. It's quite long, but I should be able to print it. And 
in theory, the way to print it is going to be... Yeah, I don't know. I think we'll find out. <laughs> I mean, the, the plotter has enough logic in it to do some kinds of fills and to do arcs. It's not really completely dumb. It's, um, it's got a little bit of smarts. So we'll find out. Um, so with this uh, thing here, I ought to be able to, to use uh, LP directly to print it. So um, I have a default printer called Penpot One Local. So LP dash D is my printer. Uh, raw output that emoji dot and it says it printed it. And then on here, it received it. And then on here, it's printing it. Or it would be if it hadn't hit an error already. Okay. It hit an error, but it did try. So, uh, let's try that again. And it goes chuggity chug, an error. Ah. For some reason, for some reason it's throwing the paper away. There's nothing I can do really, but well, maybe it's maybe it's expecting the paper the other way around, but it seems odd. Is that possible? I didn't read the manual. <laughs> I guess I could read the manual. No, no, it's, uh, it's, not, it's before it gets to print. It's, um, it's throwing it off the paper even before it gets there. Now, there we are. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> it's a hand. It's totally the right emoji. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, the error, fl the error light is flashing. Um, Oh, oh, big zoomy. <laughs> okay, something. Uh, wow. Something about the coordinate system is messed up here. Uh, and it's hitting error again. <laughs> yeah. But this seems wrong. I mean, it seems like this is surely wrong because it's. it's only driving one side of the paper, and that that's going to go wrong anyway. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's do that again. I have to figure out like where the coordinates go. And here already the error light is flashing, and then it throws it off the paper. And Maybe it just needs. Maybe it needs to start like that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, this is wrong. This is like it's it's only got a half, a one half, one side of the paper. <laughs> no, 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 stop. <laughs> right, this is this is broken. <laughs> but if that wasn't broken, then like why? Maybe I load the very, very edge of it. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Ah. Okay, that's the trick then, is you just load the tiniest edge. Right, uh, 
<laughs> Let's play that again. New paper. You load it up to the edge there. Drop it down. Hit the button. It zeroes the paper, finds the far corner. And there's like a there's like an integer overflow or something. Because it's perfect in all respects, except for how wrong it is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's beautiful and mechanically busted. <laughs> but the hand itself is amazing. It's really amazing. I mean, it has like fine detail and... and really no ickiness at all that I can see. It's amazing. All right, well. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do. I wish I, were, I, wish I knew like the way to reset That's cool. Okay, so P2 says, let me take you to the top of the paper. And P1 says, take you to the bottom. And you can use that to do more alignments. This is the top point, this is the bottom point. Choose pen, choose pen. Choose pen, choose pen. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, oh no, don't do that. Ooh. It's um yeah. It's a carousel thing. Okay, turn it off. Turn you back on. Lift this. Put this back down. And one. One. Okay. Ten two. Ten one. Ten six. Ten one. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Nope. Nope. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Okay. So going backwards from ten six is a little busted. So there's something in this. I think the lesson is don't use pen six. You can train your coral board to watch the device and emergency stop when trouble detected. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got lots of power here. I've got the Raspberry Pi and a Teensy and the internal stuff, which I guess is an AO85 or a 80 or it's like there's a real piece of machinery. It's starting to smell. Hmm. I think I'm going to go over that with a. See how hot it is <laughs> at the end of this session. It smells a bit. <laughs> it doesn't smell bad, it just smells a little like that 80s electronics smell. Um, but in terms of like watching the device and stuff, um, the thing that I want to do, <laughs> maybe a bit stupid, uh, is this. Um, I've got, I've got fairly large amounts of, of LED strips. <laughs> I've got these LED strips, and uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but what I what I want to do first is have an LED strip mounted over here <laughs> that 
that turns the right color according to the pen you've selected and like highlights your, your plot as it draws. That's my, that's my dream. <laughs> and then we'll get to cameras. Because yeah, absolutely. You can plug a, uh, a little Raspberry Pi camera into these things. Um, I am going to try one more thing. which is I'm going to plot this machine plot um, on large size paper. Because what's the use of a plotter if you don't have to be? Uh, and uh, did I say this is a a digital branded thing, it's digital LVP16 and it's exactly a clone or a branded, a rebadged version of the HP 7475A but it's a digital thing so this is really cool because we're in Massachusetts and it, so it's an East Coast plotter <laughs> and and I'm really pleased with that because who wants Californian plotters when you're in Massachusetts? Um, <laughs> and then this came with it, and it's paper for plotters. And look at the the CRT on it, and the print, the picture of the actual plotter, and it's um, digital branded paper. <laughs> so. We're shopping at the digital store today. Digital Equipment Corporation is um, is not only only supplying um, this package is packaged with the best drawing side face up. So this is like the real deal paper. And sure enough, it is. This is actually nice paper. This is really nice paper. Okay. So now that I know. Um, the way I want things to come out. I can do pen one. Yep. Turn it off. Turn it on again. It says error already. I do not know why. But let's set the paper up. Load the paper down. Oh. Turn it off again. There's a physical dip switch for which type of paper I'm using. And I'm going to flip it to say A3. Well, that's US size, or whatever the US equivalent of A3 is. Size B paper. Right. N1. Yep. All right. Right, well we have not quite the pen I was hoping for. Come on, that's not the pen I was hoping for. Let's pick a different one. Let's reset it. And go. Yep, come on. Well, that'll do. I guess it's a blue pen, so it's close enough. And uh, let's go on here and send this machine.plt to the plotter and see what happens. And it's going to print backwards, I guess, because that's what happened. Oh, it's printing sideways. Oh my god, it's not even backwards, it's sideways. And then it threw an error. Well, there we are. So that's the... Uh, that's as far as we get today. It's beautiful in its way 
and error prone. And at the same time, it's perfect. <laughs> so, okay, so we can batch print. We can totally batch print any SVG file in the universe, and it's going to be perfect. Well, maybe. A bunch of things falling off the edge of the tape. <laughs> and we can say, uh, yeah, surprise, then you're right. <laughs> and we can take any vector graphic and hopefully print it as PDF and just copy the PDF up to the up to the printer. And actually, why don't I try that? If I uh, open um, this SVG file, I'm going to open this uh, SVG file in a web browser. And then you'll see what it looks like in theory. I guess it is kind of long. Um, there it is. But how about file... Oh no, how about I open it in preview.app? Because preview.app is basically like a postscript uh, SPF, a PDF viewer. And if I open that thing in preview, then I should just be able to save as PDF without any weird machinery going on. I don't know, I could try it from Chrome. Find, save, page as... Okay, now my uh, computer is uh, just being super slow. But I'm going to save as, no, you can. I can say print to PDF. Alright, preview.app, file open. Uh, this thing, sorry you can't see this, I don't talk to myself, play, HPGL, machine. It doesn't like it. No, no. Okay, that doesn't work. Let's instead go into the browser, file, print. It didn't like it when it was postscript. Did we really do this right? Let's try it. I'm just going to print as is to the printer. From Chrome, and it's it's saying error. So let's reset this thing. Go. Okay. Let's try that again. File. Print. Print. Nothing. Oh no, it's showing error again, straight away. So I didn't like that. Uh, and the log. Oh, because it was PC, PDF. Uh, yeah. It was PostScript again. It says this thing is PostScript. In the log. So. Turn it off. Reset the paper. Turn it back on again. Go back to Chrome. Go file print and save as PDF and put it in here and. Save as machine.pdf and uh, okay. Open machine.pdf in the uh, in the terminal. 
and in preview.f, it looks way too big. It falls over two sides of paper. So maybe my SVG front line is actually just too big. But let me try to print it anyway. By uh, not going raw, but just getting an idea. Machine PDF to the plotter. And it's got the error light on it. Oh, oh, oh! Something's happening. Pick up a pen. Ooh, it has a bounding box. Oh, yeah. Okay. Something broke again. And the thing that broke, it's printing it the right way around now. And it just stopped. So I've got Mac. This is amazing. <laughs> Many kinds of failure. <laughs> so I wonder what the error is. I think the error might be more significant than it's been letting on. Because I've been dreaming that the error is like... Uh, like a software thing. What if the error is actually my flow control to the device? Maybe I'm just saying like cat and it is like horribly, horribly too fast and my flow control's not working and so the document gets corrupted once the buffer gets full. What if that's the case? <laughs> okay, guesswork. I think I'm going to have to stop there because I'm, I'm fading. Um, that's my working hypothesis. Um, that it's failing halfway through a big print job because of flow control. Although that doesn't really make sense because the, um, uh, the thing, the, the hand would have hit flow control and, and it came out great. And the log is Oh, that's interesting. It got postscript again. Maybe because just like the postscript thingy is crap. Why am I getting postscript? I shouldn't even be getting postscript. But let's have a look at this file and get a little code. Oh, where are my temp files going? <laughs> no. Um. Hmm. These shouldn't be like temp files that get that. that these temp files should not be going away. Right? Uh, it's. Um, it's taking these things. Now let's see. Uh, printer. Printer is accepted at the. This is just print state. IPP request is. I can't tell if it's like saying print this thing. This. I think this is a job, but it doesn't tell me it's my own time. I think it's kind of printing. This print HPGL thing here says this spool file is in the spool directory. Oh, it's on Vospool which yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, let's go look at that. Here are all the things I've printed. Let's look at the first piece of this one. It's postscript. It's, it is postscript. 
and I tried to send this thing to set it up so that it didn't say anything about Postgres. It says I support PDF, I support HTML, I support Octet Stream. Maybe I have to tell it you now Octet Stream. Okay. Anyway, there we go. I think it's the Postgres conversion of this darn thing. So let's do one more thing. I'm going to send it as raw, a PDF file. And turn this thing on, send to the paper, put it down, send the file as a raw PDF, look at the log, it is PDF, it's going to pick up a pen, it's drawing a bounding box, it's scaling kind of a little bit weird, and it broke again. That's really interesting. It broke in the same place. So maybe it is flow control. So I need to do some tests. I need to do some tests that say, um, force it to be PDF, not Postgres, and test something that sends it very slowly to the port instead of sending it all at once so that I don't get flow control issue. And those are my next steps for a different day. But it's going to be for a different day because I'm tired now. So <laughs> thanks everybody for hanging out yet again. Vastly successful forays into getting machinery halfway working in inimitable style at the brickyard and it's a very quiet evening today. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Great to have your company. <laughs> and, uh, yeah! Yay! <laughs> what a beautiful toy. I've got to put the pens away, uh, put the caps on, shut down, turn the lights off. Thanks everybody. See you next time.